Hi, this is Mike Catano from the Department of Quantitative Health Sciences at the Cleveland Clinic Learner Research Institute here to talk to you today about some of the confusion and the nuances associated with looking at COVID-19 counts in the United States. We've made a slideshow, so I'm going to walk you through some of the slides and some of the issues with uh, trying to understand the statistics that are being reported here today. So we first look at slide one. Uh, this is the slide that everyone is looking at. It's all over the news, every channel you turn to, and that shows the case count across the United States. So we can see in each state how many uh, positive cases for coronavirus that uh, each state has had. Uh, we have a trend over time for the number of new cases, um, and we show for the top uh, 16 states here, the total number of cases that they have found. But um, although this is a popular view to, to, to take, it's confusing for at least three reasons. One is that um, most of the cases are mild. Of course, many are severe and many are fatal, but counting all of the cases probably is not the most interesting thing to do. We probably want to zoom in on the severe and the lethal cases of of the coronavirus. Uh, a second issue is uh, that to test positive you first must have a test kit and not all the states have the same number of kits. There are different rules in place for who is tested so access and availability to testing differs across the states. That clouds an interpretation if you can't get tested in one state but it's easy to get tested in another state. What is that really showing us? Third, of course, is the population difference across states. Um, of course, we're going to have more cases in New York than we will in West Virginia because way more people live in New York. So I think just looking at case counts of all types of cases uh, across uh, and, and among the states is not the most meaningful way to get a handle on these data. So let's look at slide two. We can do a little bit here to improve that. Now we're going to look at the number of cases per 100,000 inhabitants of each state. That at least helps us adjust for the issue that more people live in some states than others, so we factor that into the calculation in terms of the number of cases per 100,000 inhabitants. Doesn't solve all the problems, but that's a, a step in the right direction. It's still hard to get a handle here on what's going on state by state. Uh, that takes us to slide three, where we zoom in on the top five states, that is the states with the most number of cases in each state. So these are the current top five, and we can see the trend over time in terms of uh, the number of cases and who seems to be accelerating versus who is doing a hopefully better job of flattening the curve. Um, once again though, this is the um, total number of cases in each state. Some states have more uh, inhabitants, so we're going to have to fix that. Let's go to slide 4 for that correction. Now we have cumulative confirmed cases per 100,000 inhabitants for each state. So that will at least put the states on an equal playing field uh, with respect to the number of inhabitants and correct for that issue that, that some states have simply more people. Still doesn't account for the issue that maybe it's easier to get tested in one state versus another or the testing is more aggressive in one state or another. Um, it also does not uh, look at the more severe cases, the hospitalized, the deaths. Um, we need to probably take a closer look at that. Uh, we do that here on slide 5. Now we're just going to start looking at uh, deaths in the United States and what the trend might be there. So this is over time. Um, total number of, of deaths per million inhabitants uh, across the country. Slide 6, we zoom in on a state-by-state -state analysis. Um, so first off, here's simply the cumulative deaths in each state uh, per 1 million inhabitants. So now we're, we're looking at um, the more severe endpoint. This is deaths from the COVID-19 uh, adjusted for the population in each state. 
and um, we can zoom in even further on slide seven. These are, as we had before, the top five states, this time with respect to total number of deaths in each state. Here we're plotting over time the um, total number, the, the cumulative deaths per million inhabitants of each state. So we're correcting for the fact that uh, some states have more inhabitants than others. We're also looking at the ultimate endpoint here of death, so not just the mild cases, but the, the, the lethal cases. And we're tracking that over time to see what trends may be happening. Each state has uh, a slightly different policy, of course, on uh, social distancing and other measures uh, intended to counter this, this virus. But we'll continue to update these slides. They're updated every night, seven days a week, uh, once the data become available from the CDC. So I hope you continue to watch these slides, watch these trends, especially the, this final one here, the deaths per million inhabitants, to get a handle on um, just the severity of this uh, tragic virus. Thanks for watching.